Hi, this is Murdoch's Music Minute, and you've come to another episode, a new episode of The Tape Memories, where I take a look at my old, mostly self-recorded tapes um, and start reminiscing about uh, stages in my life, what memories uh, these tapes are connected to, and uh, more or less then freely tr uh, start to um, yeah associate whatever comes to mind uh, based on those tapes. Um, I've got uh, two boxes filled with old tapes. Um, as I said, most of them are self-made, self-recorded tapes, um, a lot of, um, you know, copies from full albums that I've taped, but also a lot of um, various mixtapes. And the one that I um, took out of the box for today's episode um, looks like this. Um, oh yeah, I'm afraid you can't really see it. Ah, oh, there you go. Um, yeah. As with most of my old tapes, uh, a very minimalist style. I've never been the one who created, uh, you know, uh, lavish, uh, very um, fantastic, uh, self-made uh, cover designs for uh, his mixtapes. Uh, it was all always very, very basic, uh, actually quite shabby looking. Anyways, um, and also the titles, um, a lot of these tapes don't really have a title. This one is simply called Sampler Time. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, I was not the most uh, creative and, and playful uh, mixtape uh, master. Um, this, by the way, is how the uh, actual tape looks like. It's still uh, functioning, still working. Just so you know uh, that I'm, you know, I'm not just holding up empty <laughs> tape cases. There are real tapes inside, and they are still um, more or less working. Um, I can uh, very well recall uh, from what time uh, in my life this tape comes from, and uh, with this one we are talking very early 1990s. So uh, this must have been made around 1990 or 1991. At that time uh, we had moved to um, another town in Germany. So um, I had to give up all my friends and uh, yeah, the place that I knew, uh, which was um, not the easiest thing for me. Um, but, um, this move to another town brought me very quickly new friends and, um, we had, uh, we were lucky we had, um, direct neighbors who also had kids a little bit older than me. Um, but, um, we got really, uh, really, really good and close friends very quickly. And this was actually um, a very happy uh, time in uh, not only my life, but in the lives of uh, my family in general. Um, and I became very close uh, friend with um, the younger of the two sons from the neighbor family, um, who still was a little bit older than me. We are in contact to this day, actually. Um, even though at first it looked like we had quite different interests. Um, he is still a, a very sportive guy, um, which I, I've never been. I've never been into sports too much, as you probably also can see from my, uh, from my stature. Um, and living in Germany, of course, football was the game of the day and everybody especially of course the boys would be meeting uh they would meet and play football in the park we were um which was close to to where we were living um and there was you know um a field of grass with even with uh football goals so you could play football 
And that was very much his thing. And, of course, um, yeah, all the kids from the neighborhood would occasionally meet and just play football. And uh, I joined, too, even though I never was uh, really uh, the best football player. In fact, I was, um, I think, quite a disappointment for, for the other boys because it was really bad. Um, and usually I ended up as the goalkeeper, which actually is um, quite... An important part in the game but back then of course everybody wanted to play on the field and uh, score the goals so the goalkeeper uh, usually um, would be someone who was uh, not very good on the field um, so me being uh, one of the younger kids uh, as a goalkeeper it didn't happen only once that I uh, uh, did not catch the ball and instead uh, was hit uh, full front in the face uh, with nose bleeding and everything. So uh, very quickly, um, I really lost interest in the game. But that didn't change anything uh, in my friendship. And uh, luckily, we shared other interests. Um, yeah. We would play outside a lot, riding bicycles, um, just fooling around. We shared the same kind of humor. We liked the same silly movies. And we shared um, a love for board games. Um, he was really a big fan of board games. Um, however, more of the kind of, um, you know, financial board games, um, games about economy, um, you know, starting with Monopoly. And then there were other games like, um, I remember one was called Hotel, where you had to, to buy hotels. Um, so that was his uh, thing. I was um, more into um, games about, you know, puzzles, riddles, or adventures. Um, I was a huge fan of uh, the Hero Quest board game, if anybody remembers that. Um, yeah, I was a dreamy child, apparently. We, uh, we like playing board games, and um, uh, of course, we would also as always in my biography, if we reach that point at one point, uh, we would, of course, also be um, listening to music. Coming back to this tape, finally, uh, sampler time. Um, a lot of the tracks, the songs I taped on this one are from the music um, this uh, neighbor guy had in his collection or would be... Um, listening to um he was um he was more of a absolute pop fan um and i think he still is um he listens uh, to to pop music um commercial pop music and there's nothing wrong with that um and you find uh quite a bit of that stuff on this tape um this was also the time when we would start buying our first own albums, um, uh, our first music uh, with our pocket money. And um, as it was um, the early 90s, um, of course, I wouldn't buy vinyl records. Um, I would be buying CDs. And the two first CDs I ever bought um, with my own money are still in my collection. So they are from, from those days in the very early 1990s in that small town in Germany. And you can see I was, um, by the way, I was 10 years old then, 10, 11. Um, so that was when I uh, slowly started uh, really buying my own music. And um, yeah, you can tell from what I bought back then, I was just a kid. Um, and a strange kid, maybe a little bit. Because uh, the first two CDs I ever bought are uh, quite different from each other. The first one 
is, and this is not a good cover for um, a webcam, the first CD I, I ever, ever bought was uh, MU, The Best of Jethro Tull. Remember, I'm talking about 1990 here. Uh, of course, nobody uh, at my age was listening to Jethro Tull. So that was already eccentric, to say the least. But I'm still happy I've got this uh, in my collection. I hardly listen to it these days because I've got, I really have got all, almost all, the Jethro Tull studio album. So this is a bit obsolete, actually. But it's a very fine collection um, for Jethro Tull beginners. And the other CD, uh, this reflects more uh, that I was a 10-year-old kid back then, was German pop music. A band called the Prinzen, the Princes. They were from uh, from the eastern parts of Germany. Um, remember, or if you know, uh, in those days the Berlin Wall had just come down, and Germany was uh, one huge country again. And these guys uh, were gaining a lot of popularity. They had been choir boys um, and uh, were doing. Um, pop music with harmless but funny lyrics and um, with a strong focus on uh, a cappella or vocal um, singing. Um, if you listen to it these days, yeah, this is, yeah, it's, it's soft, harmless pop music. Uh, some of the lyrics are still quite funny, some are a little bit cringeworthy. It's basically, it's really centered around their voices and some typical uh, 1990s uh, electronic pop beats. Um, but uh, for reasons of nostalgia, I've always kept this one in my collection, though I hardly listen to it. This Leben is grausam. Schrecklich gemein, das Leben ist grausam und gar wie ein Schwein. And this brings me to uh, German language music, because in yes, in in all of my videos so far, of course, uh, I have been talking about um, quite famous acts from mostly Great Britain or the USA, uh, and people or viewers might be wondering: uh, Have you really always been listening just to you know the the um, the cult acts from from the USA and Great Britain? Since you've been a child, of course not. We were also listening to a lot of uh, German language music. Um, not as much maybe as other kids. I've always been a fan of of, um, of other acts, of more international acts. But uh, that uh, doesn't mean that uh, I never listened to German music or that German music uh, was bad. Um, and to come back to um, my neighbors, um, uh, my friend, uh, this younger son, he uh, was listening to a lot of German language pop and uh, rock music. And um, also um, my sister, other kids around, of course, we would be listening um, also to German acts. And um, this made me think of uh, some of the big German names that were around, and most of them are still around these days. So what would I or mostly the people around me in my family and in that neighbor family, uh, what would they be listening to? Um, and some of the names that pop up, um, and some are also on this tape, um, were uh, bands like, for example, Die Toten Hosen. Um, they are sort of a national treasure these days in Germany. Um, they are still considered a punk rock band and they, uh, they started as a true punk rock band uh, rather late in the game in the early 80s when uh, punk rock internationally uh, had already been declared dead. 
But that's when they started in Germany and very quickly uh, became sort of a cult band. They are still around these days. They are they still have a certain punk attitude, uh, but. I'd say um, nowadays they can rather be considered um, a rock band uh, with punk roots, and they are re they really are a household name uh, in not only in Germany in German speaking countries in general. <laughs> Another band, uh, more notorious, um, really not um, not looked at with fondness by parents in those days, were um, another punk outfit called the Ärzte um, in German, the Doctors. Um, they were, you know, deliberately provocative uh, compared to the Totenhosen, less political maybe. Uh, and indeed, back then, in they, they they were also from I think the the mid 1980s, and back then they had uh, released a few tracks that uh, actually uh, were banned by German radio and uh, um, had been put on the index. Um, so you were actually only allowed to buy and listen to them if you were 18 years old. Um, I guess that gives you an idea of the content. Uh, I was aware of this notoriety. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't hear those songs back then. Um, but they were also very, very popular, of course, with with teenagers, um, with kids a little bit older than me. Um, and um, then I think in the late eighties, early nineties, they split up for for a while. Um, and then reunited with a new bass player and also the Ärzte are still around these days and also nowadays considered really established uh, artists, one of the most important uh, punk and rock bands from Germany uh, of all time. So with my uh, Prinzen CD, um, I was really, really rather harmless and more in the in the kids or family friendly corner here. Um, but of course, there uh, were other huge pop rock acts in Germany. Um, some of them also, uh, of course, in the collection of my friend from the neighbor home. Um, he, by the way. Uh, still had a lot of vinyl records. Of course, uh, then very quickly, uh, everybody would only be buying CDs. 1990, 1991 was when the CD really um, took over the market, um, at least in Germany, I guess, uh, maybe the USA and was a bit quicker. I don't know. But um, yes, uh, CDs were uh, the big thing and also uh, the grown-ups would no longer buy vinyl records but uh, yeah there were still vinyl records around also in my friend's collection and uh, he would uh, apart from uh, the more rock raucous uh, uh, punk acts that i mentioned uh, he would be listening to um, huge german stars such as udo lindenberg <laughs> Herbert Grönemeyer. And also um, uh, a quite uh, comedy uh, Austrian band called Erste Allgemeine Verunsicherung.
these are some of the acts I fondly remember and uh, um, yeah, acts I also enjoyed, um, at least uh, several songs by them. And they would also be uh, played on the radio. Um, the Erste Allgemeine Verunsicherung is not around anymore. I think they, they made a farewell to several years ago. But uh, both Udo Lindenberg and Herbert Grönemeyer are still active musicians and, well, probably, um, without exaggerating, the biggest and most successful uh, male uh, German uh, singers of their generation. Of course, there are a lot of younger German uh, pop musicians around, um, but I'm not an expert on that, to be honest. Um, I don't listen to um, a lot of uh, German, uh, current German language music, I have to admit. Um, and speaking of pop music from my friend's uh, collection, um, which is not German, but also uh, to be found on this um, uh, on this tape, um, he would be listening to stuff like "Aha." Foreigner. Or Sting. And while uh, browsing through the track list of this mixtape, mm, I noticed there are also some artists that uh, fall more into the uh, then rising alternative rock categories. Um, there was a German uh, rock band called Fury in the Slaughterhouse, who had, um, at least on a national level, uh, quite a hit with a song called uh, Time to Wonder. Now this is not the time to wonder. And the cooler, uh, newer acts back then from Germany um, started doing this sort of uh, crossover music, which blended rap and heavier rock music and probably uh, can be made uh, responsible uh, later on for genres like a uh, new metal and one of those acts um, also <laughs> included here by me on this tape and I guess this was also from the collection of my friend was a band called H Blocks. From that, um, you can also see that uh, that was the time when, uh, also in Germany, rap and hip-hop started slowly to develop. Um, the first uh, German-language uh, hip-hop bands uh, were coming up, one of them called uh, Die Fantastischen Vier. They are also, these days, really uh, revered and established artists. Uh, they were one of the first, maybe even the very first uh, German language hip-hop group. Um, but they were coming more from, um, you know, a, a humorous approach. So we didn't have, we didn't, back then we didn't have German uh, gangster rap. 
uh, but that that came a little later. Uh, but that's a chapter um, that I didn't follow as a music listener. And um, the H blocks, I remember, <laughs> I even saw them live uh, in the mid '90s uh, at a festival. Um, not the type of music I listen to today, but a little bit of that alternative kicking against um, the parental rules uh, type of music also uh, can be found occasionally uh, on my old tapes. So uh, that was this little chapter uh, from my uh, probably not too interesting musical biography. Um, if you uh, prefer me talking about um, specific albums and concentrating really on the artists and the music, check out my other videos. If you enjoy this little glimpse into, well, uh, my musical personal memories, then stay tuned for more um, tape memories. And maybe let me also know in, in the comment section, um, what do you remember as the first music or albums, um, CDs, vinyl records, whatever, that you uh, purchased yourself? What was the music that you went out uh, to buy um, for yourself when you were maybe a kid or teenagers? Let me know. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm aware this has become a bit of a longer episode, definitely a lot longer than planned. Um, I'll try and make the next ones a bit more concise and shorter again. And I promise uh, I will shave for my next video, whatever that is going to be. Until then, thanks for listening and maybe, hopefully, see you again on my channel. Cheers and bye-bye.